Did so you had a chance also to support the present front runner, Donald Trump. He beats Joe Biden in all these polls, so why not Donald Trump? Look, I think his time has come and gone. That was one of Trump's mega donors saying that he has no chance. The last three months of his presidency certainly did not speak well of him, not in my mind anyway. Only the last three months? What about his appointment of anti-worker and anti-union judges, or his attempt at a Muslim ban, or these moments? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. You said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Are, are well, I do the think there's blame, the yes. I think there's blame on both sides. So you look at, you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. It's like when someone points out that there are more nipples in the world than people. Groundbreaking. <laughs> so if the donors don't like Trump, then who do they want? Um, what about that? I mean, the talk is that you, you've sort of sized up the, the field, and, and you like Nikki Haley, and, 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 you want, and you want to support her. Yes, I am going to support her, I think. Uh, she's just what we need right now. I think her approach is smart. I think she's clarified herself on some missions, which is very important. And more importantly, I think the American people need this kind of leadership. You mean this woman? I do think he was the right president at the right time. I don't think he's the right president going forward. Why? Think about it. Chaos follows him. Everywhere he goes, chaos follows him. And in a time where we need to start getting our act together, do we really want to go that route? I don't think we do. If he becomes a nominee, do you support him? I'll support the Republican nominee. I mean, I think that's important that we support Let me the ask Republican you this. nominee. Because I think anybody is better than Kamala Harris at this point. Look, it doesn't matter which of these Republican clowns you choose. They're all battling to be the runner-up to the Regina George of the Republicans. That is Donald Trump. They're all battling to the death for second place to be the betas of the non-alpha. So why don't we go through each and every single one of the Republican candidates that are um, still running for president and we can dispel everything and talk about why all of them, regardless of which one you choose, are disasters. We already talked about Nikki Haley, so why don't we move over to the, quote, biggest blowhard in America and the self-described CEO of Anti-Woke Incorporated, Vivek Ramaswamy. In addition to calling to abolish the FBI and replace it with a new FBI, raising the minimum voting age to 25, even though his own staff does not think that's a good idea, and advocating to end birthright citizenship, he claims that it's in the U.S.'s best interest to just let Ukraine go to Russia. So he would just let bullies win. Great. Well, what about tiny white boots Ron DeSantis? Despite having a lower support for his candidacy than from when he even announced, Ron DeSantis's uh, Make America Florida plan is not going very well, considering that he's spending a lot of his time investing into fueling the culture war, trying to uh, ban trans people from getting gender affirming care, as well as passing things like the infamous Don't Say Gay bill, which yes, it's called the Parental Rights and Education, but prohibits the discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity. Um, and, you know, it's funny because straight people, I guess, can uh, use their preferred pronouns and talk about their wives and husbands. I guess just gay people can't because then it's seen as sexuality. Anyway, um, as well as also just trying to um, ban drag shows. All doing this while kicking off 250,000 Floridians from Medicaid, raking in big donor cash, supporting his big donors that he often calls out for being too woke, yet he takes their money, as well as using migrants and political stunts trying to stick it to your opponents to grab headlines instead of doing anything to economically deliver for your own constituents. If the cruelty is the point, then yes, we hear you loud and clear, Ron. We hear you loud and clear. And lastly, there's Chris Christie. Look, I give credit where credit is due, and criticism where criticism is warranted. It is good that he calls out Trump um, and his corruption, his criminality, and says that he's unfit to be president, highlighting all of that in his own party. Great. But what would a Christie presidency look like? Well, first off, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Bless his heart. But secondly, he would probably do one of the most unpopular things in America— for people across both sides of the aisle. And that is cutting social security, raising the retirement age, 
which is a cut for Social Security. Watch. We're in huge deficits, and we need to deal with Social Security because 2034, 24% benefit cut. There are millions of people in this country. You won't talk who about won't that survive. if you're the nominee. You, of course, I will. I'm talking about it right now. The fact is, we have to look at things like means testing for yeah. the very wealthy, don't need to get Social Security. And secondly, for people in their 30s and 40s, we need to consider, you know, raising the retirement age. They'll have plenty of time to plan for that. Not for guys like me who are 60, but for people in their 30s or 40s, when you have time through your 401k and your IRA to plan for that, we need to give them the time to do that. So it doesn't matter which disaster you choose. All of them are bad. Some, you know, less bad than others, but all of them are, are jack all of them are objectively bad. I can't English. It's Monday. <laughs> so seriously, are we going to um, hedge our bets on one of these clowns or are we going to actually um, take a different path forward? Look, you don't have to like Joe Biden to realize that voting for him is harm mitigation. And if you want to put fire under him and try to nominate and go for a better, more progressive candidate in the primary, I would say go for it. But at the end of the day, it's also important for us to vote on harm mitigation and see um, what these clowns would bring would maybe even make um, the conditions in the United States worse, especially for people of the LGBTQ community or people of color, as well as people who are, support unions and so much more. So really, are we really going to take a bet and work with one of these clowns or are we going to maybe play it safe <laughs> and so that we don't, uh, we don't vote in someone that says they're going to be a dictator? on day one. Also, my name is Scott Johnson. You can find more of me on my YouTube and on my TikTok, which are both in the description box below. I do a morning show on my TikTok, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. But most importantly, do not forget to smash that subscribe button to Rebel HQ. You know you want to do it. I'll see you in the next video.